Hello and welcome. Uh, this is a talk about Proton What Lies the Stream. And by that, I mean all the custom patches that we have in Proton on top of Wine. Uh, so this is a state of experimental 7.0 branch as of August 26. This is where I froze the thing because the branch is constantly being rebased. So uh, it would not be very easy to keep up to date. So the numbers here are as accurate as possible, but maybe a little bit off and like, what do I know? I'm just mopping the floors here. So, uh, so let's see how many things we have on top of Wine 7.0. That's about 2,200 commits, which is kind of yikes, right? Uh, we don't, we try to diverge from the upstream as, uh, like we try not to diverge from the upstream uh, as much as we can, but that seems like the number is pretty awful. So let's see how many reverts we have. Okay, so 131 reverts, let's get rid of those. Then we also cherry pick a lot of commits from upstream. So that's 910. That's pretty good, getting the, lower, uh, the number pretty low. Uh, then we have a bunch of fix-ups and amends. A lot of the amends are just uh, cherry picks of the commits from upstream. So quite often the developer will push uh, the commit to the Proton branch while working in parallel on upstreaming the changes. And usually when the change finally lands, people tend to create amend commits that just add the cherry pick tag, which is very helpful for rebases and tracking all of those. So we are getting there. Uh, so we will be left with about 1,000 commits after doing all the rebases and auto squash on top of the newest branch, uh, on, on top of the Ma Wines Master. So that's still still a lot. And let's see what's our, what are those 1,000 commits, right? So the one of the biggest blocks that we can identify is all the F-Sync and E-Sync work. So including all the fixes, that's about uh, 140 commits. And we have this mysterious commit that's in the middle of that block, and I'm not sure what to do with it. Uh, it says this or something like this should go upstream. Uh, this is in invalid behavior. So probably I should chase the person who made that and make sure that, that that's still the case. Uh, then we've picked up a lot of commits from wine staging. So it's not only ports from one wine staging to our repo. Uh, it's also quite often that something was initially developed for Proton, but doesn't quite fit upstream. Uh, oh, you cannot hear that. Echo, yeah. So let me lower volume here. Or however that works, that's not a touch screen and I'm dumb. Uh, okay, so is that any better? Okay, uh, I tried to offset the road work that we have here going in the background, but that didn't help. Okay, so the the idea is that not all the patches in the wine staging were picked up from the white staging. Some of that stuff was developed in Proton by people working on Proton, and then it didn't quite went upstream. Uh, because maybe they are in sli slightly rougher shape than they should be. Uh, so the upstreaming path is through wine staging. So they made their way to wine staging. So that's 47 comments, not that much. But as you can see, a lot of uh, the series are there. So then there's the implementation of low fragmentation heap. Uh, it's 17 commits. Most of the cleanups are already upstream, which is very, very nice. So there's a lot of changes around how uh, the allocators are designed, uh, and those were upstreamed. The implementation haven't been the end, though, though, and it needs a major rework to be upstream worthy. So this is something that Remy is looking into, as far as I know, but currently there are other more important things. But it's nicely pretty self-contained uh, because the, all the changes that enabled making that uh, are, are in my mainline wine. Then we have a bunch of things that are here to enable gaming. So uh, on Windows, there's this thing uh, where the drivers install DLLs in your system and the games just expect them to be there. So there's a bunch of stuff from AMD. Uh, there's uh, stuff from NVIDIA, like NVA API. Uh, so those two first DLLs are installed by AMD drivers. And a lot of games, if they see 
uh, that you're running a certain graphics card with vendor of AMD, expect them to be there, like unconditionally. Uh, and some of the games crash, some of the games like half work. So uh, I don't believe this is uh, like they belong in line. So that's why we keep them up, uh, downstream from there because it's uh, not a part of the core OS. Uh, and we keep on developing them. So AMD AGS is the biggest one with 38 commits. Then we have some commits from uh, ATI DL. So this is like a display library, I believe. Uh, and there's also .NET Fix 35. This is like very cursed thing. Uh, I believe that modern versions of Windows actually detect that .exe as well and skip installation pretending that it was successful. So it's cursed on Proton because we do that. We have a stub that just like, okay, uh, we overwrite. If you try to run that exe, that stub is run and we pretend it has succeeded and Windows does the same thing as far as we know. So it's, it's a very cursed thing. Uh, so yeah, those are just stops to make things go. Luckily, the NVI API project uh, that uh, is built on top of the XVK is a completely separate library. So we don't have to uh, we don't have to carry that in the Wine repo, and it's separately maintained. We just sync up uh, that as one of the sub modules. So then there's uh, UI automotion, uh, automation. So a lot of the patches already made it in. Probably some patches from this list also made it in since I started working on this presentation. Uh, so there's 33 commits that were still downstream, but that number is uh, going down and Connor is working really hard on, on making the number to go to zero, so which is greatly appreciated. Uh, so for the context, the UI automation is basically when you click on some controls, some stuff can happen. And the, the reason why it was developed for Proton was Steam Deck and to have like on-screen keyboard pop up whenever you select a text field or, or things like that. that. That was one main driving force as far as I know. Uh, then we have uh, Vulkan Child Window Rendering, which is uh, also rather hacky and unperforming thing. I think it uses X composite to, 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 to render things. So that hopefully someday in the future will end up in, uh, will end up in upstream, but definitely in very, very different shape that we have that uh, in Proton. Then there's a bunch of uh, targeted uh, Steam hacks. So those are things that also don't definitely belong to uh to upstream wine this is things like making sure that we don't interact with uh, steam overlay when it's opened uh that we don't capture uh like the keyboard inputs and pass them to the game whenever the steam uh, is open uh that we uh have the ability to bridge the linux steam client to the windows steam client dlls uh, that we handle the Steam controllers and Steam Deck uh, input devices correctly. It's a lot of uh, hacky things, and one of the things here is also the tap tip that I mentioned for on-screen keyboard uh, on the Steam Deck. Uh, so most of that is just to make us work well uh, with some interfaces that Steam Deck provides, and hopefully this will also, like, we'll have less of that stuff over the time as things get refined, but for now they're okay, and they definitely don't belong in upstream in that form or shape. Uh, then we had a lot of work, uh, thanks to Gabriel, to uh, get Final Fantasy Launcher running. There's a lot of changes to WineGecko, uh, a lot of changes to uh, MSHTML and JScript implementations, and uh, he's upstreaming all of that as far as I know or at least most of the changes. And there's a lot that has already been upstreamed. But when I made the slide, that was still uh, 110 commits of MS, MS HTML and JScript uh, changes that were living only in Proton. But yeah, I, I would like to see that number go much lower. Uh, shared resources. So this is something that will probably not get upstreamed anytime soon because it has to provide some extra interfaces and it's uh, basically bound to vkd 3 d Proton and the XVK and like the, the changes in all of the, those three components and make sure that they can talk through that. 
the, the proper implementation would probably be much lower level driver stuff than we have here. But this is good enough and it's small enough and it's contained well enough to, to have it for now. And we have shared resources working, mostly. Yeah, thanks to Derek. Uh, then we have a whole category of 48 commits, which is uh, targeted game hacks. So uh, basically the game does something weird and there's no easy way of fixing it in a sensible uh, manner that will not break everything else beside that game. So basically we will have to have a hack that either recognizes the game name, the Steam app ID or something like that and make sure that the behavior is altered only for uh, for that thing. So there are only 48 comments like that. And uh, the most spicy thing I would say is the user 32 changes. So those definitely have to be gated to a game. Everything else we will have a second look over time. But yeah, uh, and one of the other categories of hacks that's interesting is uh, uh, hacks that we do in MS Core E. So this is the uh, .NET runtime and some games uh, have like a weird thing with overriding uh, names of the assemblies uh, through stat static constructors which Mono doesn't support and probably won't support anytime soon. So it requires a lot of hackery. Yeah, if you want to come and join me here and explain that. Okay. <laughs> that would be appreciated. Yeah, so actually what's going on there is um, .NET. Yeah, it's oh. used to. Okay. It's used to. That one is for stream, that one is for, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, .NET um, kind of allows you to link libraries, and the libraries aren't brought in until you actually use them. So there are some games that will link a library, and they just don't ship it. Um, and there are some subtleties there in terms of the way that you're referencing them and Mono and .NET Framework are a little bit different and Mono needs to load the library, .NET Framework doesn't. So what we do is we just build our own version, our own stub version of the library that has the thing that they're not really using and nothing else and that allows it to load. Otherwise, it's really hard to get Mono to load things in the right way. Okay, thank you. Put that in. Yeah. So, and I, I believe that there are also some games that use some tricks to change the name. So the assembly is existing under a different name, but since they are loaded only after they are required on uh, .NET, so we will probably need to carry those hacks for those games for a very, very long time. Uh, what else? So there's a bunch of stuff uh, that's dedicated to performance tuning. One of that is using uh, shared uh, shared pages. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, just can never use bypass compositor, alias, like some shared data. Yeah. So using shared data for handling a lot of keyboard and mouse stuff because that has to go to a degree through Wine Server, and that's a very expensive thing. So optimization for that was to make as much of that go through the shared uh, uh, shared data. The question is how much of that will can eventually land in upstream. Uh, as far as I know, there were some upstreaming attempts of part of this, but I'm not sure how far that has went. So that's something we'll have to look in, uh, into. And there's just a bunch of things that are uh, optimizing things whenever you're running with a full screen hack uh, and uh, like some smaller tweaks. So 57 commits of that. Then we've added a bunch of extra stuff that just makes us live easier while mostly debugging games. So this is just extra logging and debugging stuff like uh, extra SDL logging, uh, a channel that adds microseconds to the timestamp, which is very good for uh, some performance issues that we are facing. 
and uh, making sure that we don't spam unnecessary messages because quite often Proton users are seeing like in Proton logs uh, error saying that OS OSK input filtering uh, is broken or uh, or there was this one about yeah uh, NTM NTLM out and this is almost never an issue uh, but people tend to see first error gravitate towards it and then like there's a lot of confusion going on so after that we have a bunch of commits that people try to upstream but they they never uh, were accepted in wine uh, most of them don't have any comments some of them have some comments saying hey uh, any feedback and nothing happens so I'll probably chase those people again to make sure all of those are uh, uh, all of those are up, uh, at least in GitLab and uh, maybe they will finally get uh, get upstreamed so uh, I think the number is pretty low because a lot of the things as I've mentioned before almost thousand commits if we look at it are cherry picks from upstream and most of those thousand commits were developed for Proton uh, so if you have only 13 commits that failed the upstreaming I think that like that's a, that's a pretty good number but we should definitely have a, another look at all of that stuff uh, then we have a bunch of stuff that probably should get upstreamed but I don't really know why it isn't maybe the people uh, haven't bothered too much uh, so uh, there's 13 comments plus a bunch of big creep Diffie Hellman stuff what that was going on uh, so this is also I'll, uh, I'll be reaching to all the authors of those comments uh, if they are still active in the wine community to make sure hey what's the state of that should that be upstreamed or not and like if not then what's the reason some of those I will probably have to take over and upstream myself because so, uh, some of those people no longer are very active so there's a bunch of audio stuff mostly audio uh, and uh, small fixes that made it into Proton, like the call set foreground, set foreground window to the active window that never were uh, even attempted to upstream, as, at least to my knowledge, I couldn't find them in any archives. Uh, after that, we have a few things that I'm not sure if Wine will want to take, but this is about application naming. So you get actual nice application names in uh, pulse audio out, uh, volume controls, that the threads are named nicely when you do PSX, and that you can see what process is that instead of like Wine preloader. So that might be something interesting to upstream, but those are like just three commits. So it's nothing serious, nothing very invasive. Uh, then we have a bunch of stuff that I managed to identify to be dropped. Uh, there's a few commits that uh, were upstreamed in some form or uh, made being deprecated uh, by completely different changes. So we will have to look at them to be sure that the issues are fixed. But all of that stuff was uh, upstreamed in one form or the other. So. Uh, then we have uh, Windows version bumps. So Proton, uh, is Wine still using Wine 7, Windows 7 as the default version? So Proton changes that and we use Windows 10. So we have a bunch of commits that just bump the version and we'll make sure that we bump the uh, Windows 10 build number in registry and a couple of other places because some games depend on that. So for example, if you want to run Red Dead Redemption, it will check if you have new enough Windows 10 and that sometimes changes with the game's updates so the game was once running but now they expect newer Windows numbers so we have to make sure that we bump that otherwise uh, people cannot play it so that's why we have this wine boot com uh, commit then we have a bunch of hacks uh, uh, for controller support so uh, why nowadays I believe still uh, enables hydro for everything that it can uh, Steam ships with extra rules that make the Hydro accessible for a lot of devices. And it turns out that it mostly works, but there's a lot of quirks with weird controllers uh, and uh, some rough corners that we still have sorted out around the D input. Uh, so we reverse that policy a little bit and we only enable Hydro for some of the explicitly set, uh, explicitly enabled controllers that we know that they work and they're fine. So that's mostly all the Sony stuff and like some of the Trustmaster 
uh, steering wheels, uh, hand on throttle and steering. I believe that's the, 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 the acronym. Uh, and on top of that, Windows is also weird when it comes to handling some of these devices. For example, this Logitech G920. It's not a heat device, it's a heat plus plus. I think that's what Logitech call it. And it comes with its own driver that does its own mapping of axes. And then you have the Linux driver, which does it slightly differently. So we have to accommodate that to make sure that uh, the mapping is accurate and uh, people can just play their games by plugging that wheel and using the auto detection game. Because a lot of games, uh, have this thing where you plug a wheel, uh, they will check the vendor and product ID and see, oh, I know that wheel. So this is the mapping we're going to use. And some of the games are even more nasty and saying like, and you cannot override it. So we have to be sure that the mappings are exactly as uh, the Windows does, including the ranges, which is super annoying. So we had to add a bunch of mappings to make sure that, that all of that stuff works. I also don't believe that those really belong in upstream wine, but maybe we'll have to start building a quick database for all of these devices to make sure that they're represented the same uh, way on, on both systems. Then we have a bunch of uh, hacks related to fonts, so partnerships with uh, a bunch of fonts uh, that we use. And this is just to make sure that we have all the fallbacks set in place, uh, that we are rendering the uh, Chinese, Japanese, and Korean correctly using the fonts that we are providing, which are mostly metric compatible with uh, whatever the default uh, counterparts on Windows are. Uh, it, it's not that much. It's just like a few hacks, 10 commits, and Parts of it maybe can be upstreamed. We'll have to look into that. A lot of stuff went upstream. Uh, so uh, this is what remains now. What you have to keep in mind that the commits related to phones, there were probably three times as many of those, but those other 20 were upstreamed and are included in those uh, thousand commits that are upstream nowadays. So then we have MFplot. So this is uh, 68 commits as of now, but I think this is, we have a very good synergy with upstream. So a lot of the stuff is first developed in Proton for like in more hacky way. And then there's a bunch of people who care about not diverging too much that make sure that it works well in upstream with adding all the tests and making it properly. So recently we had a huge effort where Remy has backported the current upstream on top of Proton. So if you run experimental, you're running those back backports and hopefully we will release 7.0-5 uh, with those backports included. So all the hacks we had got reverted. Uh, everything from upstream got cherry picked on top of it. And then we did uh, a bunch of testing, making sure there are no regressions. There were regressions, so we had to add some hack commits back. We had to write some new hacks. And uh, huge thanks to our QA, which like they did amazing work, just like going through a lot of games, uh, watching cutscenes, and making sure that it all works. So we are still tweaking that. So that's where you have the 68 commits. But hopefully, like that number will be much lower when we will rebase on top of next uh, major wine version. So now we are reaching the section where we have like the really, really ugly stuff. And that's mostly our wine X11 changes. So this is super hairy. Uh, and the biggest problem is that Wine X11 changes rarely made it in upstream because this is super brittle. And uh, quite often what works for games, uh, especially like stuff that likes to run in full screen, maybe doesn't quite well work for, uh, for office applications and like more desktop stuff. And on top of that, there's like a huge impedance mismatch between what Windows does for windowing and what X11 does for windowing. And on top of that, you have a layer uh, of different window managers that have their own policies, their own quirks to be worked around. So as you can see, we have some workarounds to work a little bit better with Matter. Uh, we have some things that we do for Gamescope, which is uh, the Wayland Compositor running on uh, Steam Deck. And, uh, and yeah, so basically those remain as hacks. Some of that stuff probably at some point in some form were discussed on the mailing list. I found a couple of threads, but all, most of that will remain as hacks. So hopefully those modern things we can drop in the 
in a year or two uh, because I believe one like all of the mother issues we had finally got fixed in upstream but there's a bunch of other things like for example this commit that generates edid if one is not available for from xrand so this is mostly for wayland wayland uh, runs x wayland and then you can use xrand to query like the resolutions and whatnot but you don't get edid from that and some games require that because like why get uh, resolution information from the os when you can query the monitors ask for the raw edid uh, have your own parsing library, parse the EDID provided by the monitor, and then present the user with resolution list. So we have a thing that generates that because there were games which legitimately were broken if the EDID was not present and the whole graphics section was basically disabled or crashing the game. So that, that's the stuff we have to deal with. That one maybe can be upstreamed in some form because like, it's kind of part of the Windows interface. Uh, but it's still like rather hacky. Sorry. Yeah, so it can it should probably be in Win thirty two U, right? So uh, we probably should upstream that one, but that was made because like the game was crashing and we wanted to do that. And that was also when the P conversion of X eleven was undergoing. So we were scary to touch anything, and also. Uh, so, you know, all of that will cause us a lot of pain because Wine X11 is now PE and most of that, those things will have to be rewritten. So, uh, then there's also FS hack, which is, I think, 10 ish commits, which I forgot to make a slide for. Uh, but after that, there's about 100 commits left. So after we went through the whole history, discarded all the cherry picks, all stuff that's upstream and all the things that I've discussed uh, uh, so far. Uh, from the 2000 commits, we have about 1000 commits that's left and they are with missing commits. So I don't have associated bugs with them. I don't know what they do other than the very short uh, commit title. And... Uh, we should probably do something about those. So I'll ask the people who are the authors to figure out like, hey, what is this stuff? And do we still need that? Hopefully we can drop most of that. We'll see. Uh, it would be good if we would not have like uh, weird comments that nobody knows about and they are like just lingering there. So, but we have about 100 of them since uh, last time we were based and for 8.0, the goal is to drop that number to zero. So, yeah. Any questions? Uh, so, so the question is about where is the first fork uh, that came to be about. So uh, I like to think about Proton more of downstream distribution than a fork uh, because it's not a hard fork. We won't continue developing that thing. We rebase regularly on top of upstream wine every now and then. So the baseline for this comparison was uh, Wine 7.0. This is the last time we rebased. So when you have Proton 7.0, that means that it's based on top of Wine 7.0. And from there on, we just start adding commits. Uh, and the source of those commits is some of them were carried over from the older Proton versions. So Proton started uh, with Wine 3.16? 3.7. 3.7. Uh, and then we started adding the commits, then we were based on top uh, 3.16 and 4. Point something and so on and so on. And they're just carried over. And I think that the, the mysterious commits are the most ancient ones. So they are lingering there since uh, the dawn of time, the very beginning of Proton. Yeah, the full screen hack was on the first thing, but it's, at least it's uh, clearly identifiable what it is, right? And the uh, other commits, like the 100 commits that I don't know anything about, they, they do stuff, they change behavior, but they're there. Yes. Uh, 
I had that. Uh, so the question was uh, from Asma, and she said that there's uh, some comics that she haven't seen that are for rafflings and other stuff. So that was kind of included. I haven't listed all the comics for all the sections because you've seen it was like a hundred comics for something. So there was like 50 comics for performance tuning, and some of those performance tuning uh, comics were the raffling stuff, which we used to make sure that we deduplicate data as much as possible. So it was included in that part of the presentation, but not listed by name uh, on the slide because uh, listing hundreds of comments is a little bit hard as I chose some of the more representative stuff. Yeah. Uh, yes, I plan on making this available. So this is basically a script that I wrote that filters either by name uh, for some of the categories, and then I have a list of SHAs uh, for some of the more esoteric categories that doesn't have clearly identifiable keywords that I can grab for. So I plan to make that available, and I plan to reach to a bunch of people uh, for the stuff that should be upstream, for the stuff that uh, tried to, like that the people tried to make it upstream, but it just got stuck on some part of the process, and to the authors of the mysterious comets. So that, that's, that's my goal. And th this was a very nice exercise like in prepar preparing for the next major proton rebase, because we can hopefully clean a lot of that stuff up. <laughs> so that was just uh, someone grateful and saying thanks. Yeah. Uh, so the question was about uh, performance and uh, the tuning that we have done and do we have any numbers. I don't believe we collect any numbers that we present, but all the comments were driven by actual data. So I remember, for example, that shared data cursor stuff was mostly about Sekiro, which was spending a lot of time in one server. So we could see that like it was yeah, the game was stuttering and micro stuttering a lot of uh, the time. And when you look at the like graphs, it was just going through the wine server and back all the time. So just moving the data to share, uh, like moving the cursor and keyboard handling to share data helped that a lot. So it's not more like we hyper optimize games, but we see an issue, game is stuttering, we have to do something about it. So it's driven uh, in that way, not to just make the number higher, just to make things more playable. It does that answer your question? Okay. Uh, e yes. Uh, so it, it's a little bit harder now because I think we have this, uh, sli uh, so the question was about how much of the stuff is uh, uh, developed as a part of the Proton, it's making it upstream, right? That, that's your question. Uh, so it's a little bit harder to measure that in the past when Andrew was doing that because a lot of the stuff was first developed upstream and then uh, maybe cherry picked in wine. So we are having a lot of the smaller changes with more tr uh, done by more trusted wine developers, which have pretty good sense of what's going to end up upstream and not. So the comments are often uh, pushed to uh, pushed to Proton and uh, being upstream at the same time, and then we maybe change things. But I would say that more than half of the work we are doing is upstream worthy and uh, is ending up in the upstream. Uh, some of the more esoteric hacks probably should also run upstream, uh, but uh, as you've seen, like the, the tree is 2,000 commits, uh, hand, over 1,000 of that, over half of it is. Uh, is uh, upstream, and most of those commits are not just straight up cherry picks from upstream. They were developed specifically because of Proton. So, over the half, uh, the question is about the hacks. The hacks, most of the, the, the stuff that we have in the hacky areas that build the rest of the thousand is something that we carry over from generation to generation. So when we started Proton 7.0, I believe we were about at 400 patches that were not upstream. And I think that's going to be somewhat stable. So 
my rough estimation would be three quarters of all work on Proton ends up driving upstream development or landing in upstream uh, in one form, uh, in one form or the other. But I can uh, look into that in more detail and come up with uh, more concrete numbers if you want. Yes, so that, that's a good point uh, from Jacek that there's also a bunch of patches that are driven by Proton development that people do upstream uh, in preparation for the next rebase, but they're actually never being cherry picked into the current Proton revision. So that's also a bunch of development that goes into upstream line in just preparation for the very, very next rebase. Uh, so the question is if there are any patches that, that should not be included if you don't want to run pro if you want to run Proton outside of Steam. So uh, basically all the Steam hacks that I've shown you, everything that has a word Steam in it, and there's also a bunch of hacks that use uh, that use uh, Steam games IDs. So if you look uh, for a commit that has Steam app ID or Steam game ID somewhere in the uh, in the commit uh, body. That's probably something you don't want to pick up. Uh, uh, so, so, yeah, but it's like for picking up things for probably other wine distributions, you mean? So if you have another wine that you want to use and you want to drop all the uh, Steam specific stuff, right? Yes. So the question was about Lutris and pr probably moving away from wine staging. I think it might be better actually staying with wine staging as a base uh, and looking at what you may need from Proton and pick that up explicitly. Uh, and if you want to look what's specific for Proton, look for all the Steam stuff. So uh, there are two categories of those, like the very specific Steam uh, deck, Steam uh, overlay stuff that you can probably just drop. And there are hacks dedicated to games that are using Steam game IEDs. So as uh, Joe said, we probably want to upstream that or like make proper upstream fixes at some point in time, but uh, you won't get the benefit of them in your wine distribution because they depend on uh, Steam game IEDs. And you don't... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But basically, you have to just uh, look at the code and like figure out what's there and what what can be used. But those are the main categories that you would be interested in. Okay. I believe that's it. Thank you.